UIM F1H2O World Championship is back in beautiful Sharjah in the United Arab Emirates where the 2013 F1H2O World Championship will be decided. Sharjah is a thriving, dynamic, modern city and it's chosen a different, less glitzy, more authentic path than the Emirates of Dubai and Abu Dhabi. Sure, there may be less razzmatazz, but Sharjah's monuments are no less impressive. With a history dating back 5,000 years, this UNESCO cultural capital of the Arab world boasts an impressive variety of Islamic architecture, including a diverse array of mosques, palaces, and public buildings. It's a cosmopolitan city bound closely with rich local customs and traditions that are part of its proud Arab roots. Sharjah has always been a wealthy trading port and it has a long and impressive maritime tradition. With its inland bodies of water and scenic corniche, it was the ideal venue for the sixth and final round of the F1H2O series, part of a weekend-long annual Sharjah Water Festival, which had numerous activities for all ages. What better venue to watch the world's top powerboat drivers battle it out to see who is the fastest on water. Now a look back at the last round in Abu Dhabi. Round 5 took place virtually next door in the Emirate of Abu Dhabi. Sami Celio was back with a new boat after a crash in Doha, and he was in fine form, winning pole position. The race kicked off with a bang as Team Abu Dhabi drivers Ahmed Al Hamali and Thani Al Kamzi collided at the very first turn dashing local hopes for a victory in home waters. At the restart, it was Sami Celio who took charge early on. Behind him, Philip Schia put up a fast and dogged performance, never letting up on the Finnish two-time world champion. Behind the Frenchman, Alex Corella tried to get the jump on Schia all race long, but in the end, he had to settle for third. Torrente started from the back due to an engine change before the race and battled his way up the field. But Marit Stromoy held him at bay on her way to getting her best result ever with a fourth place finish. Sami Celio ran away with the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix win, leading from start to finish. That win puts the Finn back on top of the world standings going into Sharjah. With just 10 points separating the four leaders, the stage is set for an incredible final round. There are 18 drivers from eight teams entering the Grand Prix of Sharjah. For these eight teams, a whole year's hard work, perseverance, dedication and racing comes down to this, the championship decider. After five rounds, it's still wide open, and unprecedented four drivers still have a shot. There are just four points separating the top three. Alex Corella of Qatar team, his teammate Sean Torrente, and Matt Croc Baba Racing Team's Sammy Celio. The winner takes all. At the top is Sammy Celio, the 2007 and 2010 world champion, hasn't won the world title in two years, trying to regain his form after a hideous crash in China in 2011. With two wins so far this year, the championship... Oh. ...is 
finally within reach. Definitely I want to have the ball here and win, win here in Georgia. And it's very tight in the points and I want to grab my third title here. So let's see, it will be a big fight today and tomorrow, so I will give it all. Just two points behind him is Sean Torrente in second place. This was the year where he rocketed to the top. Back from a suspension, he started the year off with his first ever podiums in Brazil and Ukraine, and then his first ever Grand Prix win in his team's hometown, Doha, Qatar. It would be an epic comeback if he could take the championship here. Man, I don't know if I can get it, but I want it really bad. Um, sometimes I feel like I want it more than my next breath, so um, we'll do everything we can. Um, we'll fight to the last minute, we'll fight to the last second, and hopefully the last thousandth of a second and get pulled today. Um, it's gonna be really tight. Two-time defending world champion Alex Corella wants to make it three in a row. He had a slow start to the year, but he stormed back into contention, now trailing in the world standings in third. And the long shot, Philip Xiap of China CTIC team, who's 10 points behind Celio. If some misfortune should befall the other three drivers, he's in line for the top prize. His speed and consistency earned him his first career win in Kiev, Ukraine, and if it wasn't for that disqualification for a non-regulation engine in the Qatar Grand Prix, he would have been at the top here. Elsewhere, changes in the lineup for Singa F1 Racing Team as Francesco Cantando is back. The man with the most Grand Prix wins in the field returns with a new boat after that crash in Qatar. Also, a new addition for the Sharjah Grand Prix, Tommy Walston returns in Team Azerbaijan. The battle begins in qualifying. Qualifying, this is it. The winner here has a solid chance of winning the race. Drivers and teams must put everything on the line and come up with the perfect lap. Team number two for now. I like number one still. <laughs> the winners must get through two rounds, six eliminated in Q1, six more in Q2, leaving the final six with a course to themselves as they go for pole position in Q3. The course, uh, it was uh, nice, but sometimes when there is uh, many boats, there's traffic and there is waves, a little bit uh, dangerous. In Q1, Team Nautica's Norwegian driver Marit Stromoy just made the cut to qualify for Q2, but her teammate Ronaldo Oscolati was seven seconds off the pace. A great run from Philip Roms of Mad Croc Baba Racing Team saw the young Finn qualify easily in eighth, moving on up to Q2. But the other youngster, Xiong Ziwei of China CTIC team, just missed the cut. Also out were Codwell Racing's Ivan Brigada, and going up in a ball of flames was Paul Shepard's number 25 boat. I started spinning some smoke and I pulled off the course and it was smoke in my cockpit and I, I've never had that situation before, so I tried to stay with the boat and then the Osprey said jump. <laughs> he was unhurt, but that was the end of his F1 H2O debut season. Bartek Marsalek of Singa F1 Racing Team was also out in Q1. In Q2, the big names all made the cut, with Philip Xiap of China's CTIC team setting the pace. He waited back at the pontoon while the rest of the field struggled to qualify. Sammy Celio, who'd already qualified for Q2, was rifling through setups trying to dial in the perfect combo when the unthinkable happened. He crashed out in spectacular fashion at the south end of the circuit. Yeah, it was just pushing hard and a little bit unlucky with the wave and barrel rolled and that's it, end of the game. The Finn was unhurt, but his world championship chances lay in tatters. Ahmed Al Hamali of Team Abu Dhabi made the cut at sixth, ahead of his teammate Daniel Kamzi. Francesco Cantando of Singa F1 Racing Team was also getting used to his new boat, unable to make it into Q3. The big surprise was Philip Roms, who set some blistering times to beat season champions like Alcamzi and Cantando. He just missed out the... Oh. 
won a place in Q3, placing 7th behind Al Hamali. Stromoy was also unable to qualify for Q3, along with Yusuf Al Rabayan of F1 GC Atlantic team and his Portuguese teammate Duarte Benevente, who had qualified for Q3 back in Abu Dhabi. That left five votes for the Q3 showdown, with Celio qualifying but unable to continue. First, Ahmed Al Hamali went out and set a great lap time of 46.78 seconds. He was followed by Jonas Anderson of Team Azerbaijan, but he was unable to beat Al Hamali's time, missing out by four hundredths of a second. After that, it was eight time pole position winner Alex Carella. He was superb out there, concentrated, focused, intense. The young Italian knew what he had to do, and he did it, setting an incredibly fast lap time of 45.52 seconds. His teammate Torrente was up next. The man from Miami was scorching around those turns, going all out as usual, no holds barred. His time, 45.95 seconds, not good enough, Corella still holding provisional pole. The last man out would be Philip Schiap. The Frenchman was fastest in Q2, but he'd need a little extra here against Corella. He is very fast in his new boat, taking those turns very tight, keeping that boat gliding smoothly around the circuit. Corella paces and waits nervously. He knows how important this pole position will be in determining the world title for 2013. Shiap's time, 46.14. Not quick enough. Corella has it. Alex Corella with pole position going into the Charge Grand Prix. I was stressing this morning. We know that the pole was uh, more important than the rest tomorrow because starting in pole was half of the championship. So it's really one of my best lap, I think, for since I'm here in Formula One. Yes. Disappointment for Celio as his boat is critically damaged. He'll start the race at the back of the field. It's gone. It's gone. Yeah, it was really bad. Luck and shame that uh, probably we lose the champions if he hides. You cannot do much. I need to start uh, tomorrow with the spare boat in the last position, so it's shame. This was even worse news for his teammate Philip Roms, who'd be giving up his boat to Celio after having got his best qualifying result of the season. With the day's action over, drivers and teams kicked back and got a taste of Sharjah hospitality. race of the year. This will decide the world champion of 2013. Four men, one world title. The starting grid, Corella and Torrente 1-2. UAE drivers Al Hamali and Al Kamzi 4 and 6. Jung starts in 8th. World standings leader Celio starts way back. He has a lot of work to do. The fleet of drivers await the mad, frenzied dash down that start chute to the commitment boy. The final minutes to the race. Nerves are more frayed than ever. It's time to concentrate, meditate, focus for the 38 lap barrage of high octane insanity that's about to be unleashed to decide. <laughs> would 
be world champion. Here we go. 10,000 horsepower roaring down that 475 meters straight away to the first turn. Philip Schiap right up there with the Qatari boats as Carella and Torrente lead proceedings. Carella gets to the turn first, Torrente right up there with him. Schiap in third, the boats stay in their starting order, no major shakeups up front. Celio already moving up the field as we see the Finn move ahead of Singa F1 racing team's Bartek Marsalek. The boats come around the circuit and enter that 500 meters straight away to the south end of the track. Carella has already opened a seven boat lead over Torrente with Schiap right behind the American in dogged pursuit. The top three are followed by Ahmed Al Hamali, Jonas Anderson and Thani Al Kamzi. The defending Sharjah Grand Prix champion gives chase to Anderson in fifth, moving up on the outside in the clean water, picking up speed. Al Kamzi dives back in on the inside around turn number four but Anderson is able to fend off the Al Kamsi challenge. Carella, Torrente and Shiap zip through that short straight from the right hand boy to turn boy number one. Shiap is going to be spending a lot of time in the Qatari boat spray as he looks for a chance to get the jump on Torrente. Good start to the race from Leo Jong as he duels with Marsalek in boat number 18, leaving the Polish driver in his wake. But Bartek Marsalek is not backing down. The Singa F1 racing team driver in pursuit. But then Zhang Ziwei goes wide and Bartek Marsalek sees his chance. Going in very tight on the turn, overtaking the China CTIC team driver. Marsalek's teammate Francesco Cantando also tries to cut in at the last second, but he's unable to get past Zhang. Sammy Celio racing in his teammate Philip Rom's boat chasing Yusuf al Rabayan of F1 GC Atlantic team as the double world champion tries desperately to salvage what small hopes are left for the 2013 world title. So far, Alex Garella looks flawless. The battle for fifth place continues between al Kamzi and Jonas Anderson as al Kamzi once again tries to take the experienced Swede on turn number four as the Team Azerbaijan driver tries to keep back one UAE driver while setting his sights on the other. Behind them, Sami Celio catches up with Al Rubayan on the yellow right-hand turn boy. And the Finn has it. There's another hurdle out of the way as Celio moves up into seventh position. But there's a lot more to be done. Sharjah has a special place for Celio as this is where he effectively won both the 2007 and 2010 world titles. But this time, he's going to need a miracle. Celio slows down. He didn't need this to happen. And Al Rubaya reclaims that seventh spot that Celio fought so hard for. His radio man looks on as Celio gets going again, but he has lost a lot of ground. No change in the lead. Once Corella has pole, he's a tough one to beat. But he still has to ward off Torrente. The shortest stretch of the race is also the toughest now as the evening sun makes visibility a challenge going into turn boy number two. This time, Cantando has Jong in his sights and the 12-time F1H2O Grand Prix winner moves past the Chinese rider with Moritz Stromoy also in the mix, coming up behind Cantando. Stromoy is the only female driver out there. She's been getting the best results of her career of late and she wants to keep the streak going. Francesco Cantando, who had a podium here last year, passes his teammate, bumping Bartek Marsalek down a spot on the top part of the circuit. Stromoy of Team Nautica trying to get her way around young Leo Zhang but the Norwegian driver having difficulty getting by so she can make a move on the Singer drivers ahead of Zhang. Let's take another look at the start of the race. The boats take off with Carella and Pole, followed by Torrente and Schiap. Celio starting way back with Cantando. As the fleet hits the first turn, Celio on the outside with Al Rubai on ahead. Good start from Celio, who immediately jumps up into eighth position after just the first turn. Back 
to the action. Corella looking nice and cozy there with clean waters ahead of him, knowing that he just has to keep his momentum going to win his third world title. That would bring him just one world championship shy of Guido Capellini's record of four back-to-back -back world titles. And to think, Corella was an F1 H2O rookie in 2010. But on Corella's tail is the just as talented Sean Torrente. With a nearly three second gap separating these two incredible racers who are both teammates and rivals. Another big talent in fourth position, Ahmed Al Hamali, who's getting back to his winning ways after a health scare last year. Francesco Cantando looking good in his new boat as he keeps ahead of teammate Bartek Marsalek in the number 18 Siga boat, which is followed by F1 GC Atlantic driver Duarte Benavente of Portugal. At the back of the field, veteran driver Rinaldo Oscolati retires, leaving Moritz Stromoy to carry the Team Nautica flag. Nearing the halfway point of the race, Corella continues to open his lead over to Rente. Now nearly a five second gap between the two teammates, both of them knowing whoever wins takes the world title. Alcamzi in fifth position gets lapped by Corella. That's how fast Corella is. But behind Corella, Torrente is having trouble getting past the Abu Dhabi driver. Coming around turn boy number four, Dani Alcamzi goes out wide as Philip Schiap moves up on Torrente. The two boats neck and neck going into the right-hander. Alcamzi also comes in at the last moment. Schiap goes around Alcamzi on the inside. Torrente nudged out on the outside. There we see it again, Alcamzi goes wide, Shia pulls up neck and neck with Torrente. There you see Alcamzi move in and take the right-hander. That shuts Torrente out, while Shia manages to find space on the inside. Now the man from Miami will have to beat Shia as well as Corella, with less than 20 laps left, and things suddenly looking very difficult now for Torrente. Lap 21, and there's Sammy Celio's hopes for a third world title dashed. That leaves three. Shiap pushing through the back markers, weaving in and out of the field, but he's still going to need a Qatar team double boat breakdown if he's to win the world title. The field thins out further as Jonas Anderson's and Team Azerbaijan's race comes to an end. Into the final few laps now, Corella so close to his third world title, he can almost taste it. He'll be fighting to keep those haunting memories of that last minute breakdown in Qatar off his mind as he just focuses on the task at hand, maintaining his pace and getting that boat across the finish line. Corella has a 3.37 second lead on Shiap. The Frenchman got his first ever Grand Prix win at Kiev in 2013, and he's been on the pace with his new Moore boat. But it's just too late for the Frenchman. Alex Corella is the 2013 Charger Grand Prix winner and the 2013 world champion. Chiap runner-up, Torrente third. It's jubilation for Corella and his entire crew. A well-earned world title, which also seals the team championship for Qatar team. Al Hamali and Al Kamzi get fourth and fifth place. Cantando does well to nab sixth. Great result for Marsalek in seventh. Teammates Al Rubayan and Benavente also with points. And a point for Zhang. Qatar team breaks the UAE hold on the world team championship nabbing top honors in 2013. The final standings for 2013. Corella once again the king of the hill. Torrente so close, but he'll take heart in having had such a good year, where he was second only to his teammate. We did it with amazing. My team this weekend worked like crazy until the all the night and wow. Thanks to all Qatar team, my brand and Sean, I mean all the guys they helped me for uh, for this championship. You know it was really it was a great race. Um I had my shot. <laughs> early 
in the race, I was staying close. I was just kind of buying my time, and and uh, we got up to some of the yellow and white boats, and they one of them decided a rather like I don't know what reckless. I don't know what he was trying to do. Maybe he didn't see me. I don't know. So um, he went to the buoy. I I had to basically shut the motor off, and that gave Shep a run on me, and he got by me. And and at that point, honestly you start thinking you know your chances. I mean, you want to be the world champion, but you also don't want to give away where we're at in the championship. For me, finishing second or third, doesn't matter. Um, I just I just want to get the maximum points I can get that day. So I'm really happy, man. I'm, I thought I'd be crushed, I wouldn't win, and I am upset, but man, I was suspended a year ago. I couldn't, I didn't even know if I was gonna race again. So to be here, second in the world championship, it's a step, and next year we take one more step. I'm very happy for my team. I'm very strong this year, and uh, in my heart, for my team, we are champions this year for sure. And uh, next year, we come back more strong. That brings to a close what has been an extraordinary season that went right down to the wire. We'll be back next year as the excitement continues in the UIM F1H2O World Championship. Wow, 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 wow.